Give Papa his channel back. What the heck? Togon. Okay, so today we've got another example of... Wacky Calc, Calc Wednesday. Wednesday! And we're going to be doing something that is sort of... Um, appropriate for the two W's that are in the name of this series. We're going to be doing an... We're going to be doing an integral over something to do with the Lambert W function. <laughs> Trusty Cup of Joe has lost some weight. He's becoming a little transparent. What are you waiting for? Let's go. Okay, so today, oh, the camera is showing some of my desk. Don't want that. So what did I say we were doing? We're doing an integral over something to do with the Lambert W function. Let's see if these markers still have anything in them, but don't worry, I got new ones. So we're going to do the integral from zero to, what the f is it? To infinity of the Lambert W function divided by x times the square root of x dx. Now you may be asking, Sam, what the heck is, is even the Lambert W function? Well, we've talked about it a little bit on this channel, and it's quite simple. So if you start with the function y equals x times e to the x, then the Lambert W function is just defined to be the inverse of this function. So if we call this f of x, then the Lambert W function is f inverse of x, which we just call w of x. That tells us that if we plug this into that, we get f composed with f prime of x, and we get um, w of x times e to the power of w of x, which based on the definition of inverse functions, this is just x again which tells us that we have certain relationships. We know that, therefore, w of x can be solved, e, e to the power of w of x can be solved for in terms of that. So we get the result that e to the power of the w function is equal to x divided by the w function. So there's lots of cool relationships you can derive uh, with itself and all that. It's got a pretty cool derivative. Um, but we're, today we're going to be answering this question here. So because of this relationship, Right? It's literally the inverse of this function, by definition. We're going to need to utilize that fact to try and solve this integral. And it's got a pretty awesome answer. Papa Flammy actually did a, simple, uh, a similar video of this. I believe it was w of 1 over x squared. And he got the answer, uh, well, let me write it out. So we, he did the integral from 0 to infinity of w of x over, I'm sorry, w of, this is barely showing up, this pen's gotta go, I'm chucking it in the trash, I'm done, goodbye, you're done, you're done. Let's try this one, let's see. So he did the integral from zero to infinity of w of one over x squared dx, and he derived that this was beautifully equal to the square root of two pi. Very, very neat. Very, very cool. I've got something that's twice as cool. Hmm. Twice as cool. Hmm. What could that mean? So, what are we going to do? We're going to make a neat little substitution. We're going to say that u equals w of x. That's right. You right there. You watching right now. You are this function right here. So, suck on that. Uh, that means using the definition of the inverse functions that we just saw based on the, you know, the definition of the Lambert W function, that tells us that x is equal to u times e to the power of u. Differentiating both sides, we get that dx is equal to, uh, if you apply the product rule, you end up with 1 plus u times e to the power of u, du. Right? Not too difficult. Quite, quite a simple little substitution to do. If we plug in... Uh, if we want 0, we simply have to plug in 0 for u, right? That will be 0 times e to the 0, which is 0 times 1, and therefore 0. And if we want x to be infinity, u just has to be infinity as well. So the bounds of the integral don't change, and we end up with the integral from 0 to infinity of what's w of x? w of x is u, right? So we get u, and we're going to multiply by 1 plus u and e to the u in the numerator as well, right? 1 plus u 
times e to the u, and we're dividing by, well, what are we doing? We're, we're plugging in this in for x, right? u times e to the power of u. So we get u times e to the power of u right there, times the square root of u times e to the power of u, and there's the du right out the front. You'll notice we get some nice cancellations, right? This u cancels with that u, and this e to the u cancels with that e to the u, and we end up with the lovely integral from zero to infinity of one plus u divided by the square root of u times e to the u du, right? Sorry for the glare, it's a beautiful day outside, I really should get out there. Um, now what we're going to do is we're just going to simply split up the integral into two pieces, right? This is quite a, it's not too difficult to solve. What we're going to do is we're going to split up the integral and we're going to get the integral from 0 to infinity. Now in this first one it's going to be 1 over this square root. So 1 over the square root of u is the same as u to the negative 1 half, right? And 1 over the square root of e to the u is the same as e to the negative u over 2, right? I hope that's all right, du. And now we're simply going to add the second integral, right? u divided by the square root of u is the same as the square root of u, or u to the 1 half. So we're going to get the integral from 0 to infinity of u to the power of 1 half. And we're still going to get e to the negative u over 2, because that's what a square root does, du. OK, so now we have these two integrals. And they're sort of in a form that's not too unfamiliar. It's pretty obvious where we're going to go with this now if you're familiar with any sort of special functions. First, we need to make one more little substitution. We're going to say that t is equal to u over 2, which tells us that 2t is equal to u, which tells us that 2 times dt is equal to du. So we have a nice substitution for our differential and the function uh, u over 2. Of course, this won't change the bounds, right? The, if you plug in 0 here, you get 0 here. If you plug in infinity here, you get infinity here, right? So that's fine. And so because I'm replacing the same thing in both integrals, it actually doesn't matter. We don't need to do two different substitutions. So we're going to end up with the integral from 0 to infinity of what's u? u is 2t. So we're going to get 2t to the power of negative 1 half times e to the negative t, right? Because we've simply replaced u over 2 with t. That's it. And then we get 2 times dt. So I'm just going to bring that 2 out the front like that. So 2 times dt. And now we're just going to add this integral, which goes from 0 to infinity. And we're going to get a 2 out the front of there as well, right? That's We're substituting the same thing, so it doesn't matter. We're replacing u with 2t. So we're going to get 2t to the power of positive 1 half instead of negative 1 half, and again times e to the negative t dt. Notice we have a couple of constants we can pull out of these integrals, which won't cause too much of a problem. So this 2 to the negative 1 half is going to be the same as 1 over the square root of 2. And so we're going to have 2 divided by the square root of 2, which is of course just the square root of 2. So for the first integral, we're going to have square root of 2 as a constant out the front times the integral from 0 to infinity. And we're going to be left with t to the minus 1 half. I'm going to, re -re I'm going to rewrite minus 1 half as 1 half minus 1. So we're going to have t to the power of 1 half minus 1 times e to the negative t dt. Ooh, looking good, looking good. And this 2 to the 1 half here is the same as the square root of 2. So we're going to get 2 times the square root of 2 out the front for this integral multiplied by the integral from 0 to infinity. And again, I'm going to rewrite this t to the 1 half. I'm going to write it as t to the 3 halves minus 1, because that's what 1 half is. Again, times e to the negative t dt. And as you can see, if you recall things about your special functions, we've got gamma of 1 half and gamma of 3 halves right here. Very, very cool that these things sort of just fall out of the math, even when we're dealing with such exotic things as the Lambert W function. It's quite neat, I must say. So because we know that this is gamma of 1 half, that's why I wrote it as the input minus 1, and this is gamma of 3 halves, which is why I wrote it as 3 halves minus 1, we just need to evaluate what those two things are. So we have the square root of 2 times gamma of 1 half Oops, get out of here, markers. Plus 2 times the square root of 2 times gamma of 3 halves. But what are those things? I mean, these are things that you could uh, 
so, you know, look up the values for, you can find other videos showing what they are. Um, because the gamma function is essentially just x minus 1 factorial, this is simply saying what is what is uh, the 1 half factorial and what is negative 1 half factorial. Now of course that's an odd question to ask since factorial has to do with permutations of uh, discrete amounts, integer amounts of things, but it's still sort of the same question. Um, and you can quite easily derive that those values are square root of pi and square root of pi over 2. So what we end up with, in the end, a very, very lovely answer, is that this is equal to, oops, this pen's gone too. Goodbye, purple. What we end up with in the end is that this is, so I'm going to rewrite what I had down there, so I have the square root of 2. Oops. The purple pen ran out, so I have to start writing it in red. So the square root of 2 times gamma of 1 half plus 2 times the square root of 2 of gamma of 3 halves. But we know what gamma of 1 half and gamma of 3 halves are. They are square root of pi and square root of pi over 2, respectively. So here we get the square root of 2 times the square root of pi, which is the square root of 2 pi. And here we get 2 root 2 root pi over 2. So this 2 and the 1 over 2 and the 1 half in here are going to cancel. And so we end up with... We're going to get 2 times the square root of 2 times square root of pi over 2. Of course, these 2's will cancel. And I will simply get square root of 2 pi plus square root of 2 pi. So I get 2 times the square root of 2 pi as my final answer for the area under this curve from 0 to infinity. And of course, if the, the, uh, the, uh, the perceptive ones of you uh, got my completely obvious um, spoiler at the beginning, this is twice as cool as... Papa Flammy's integral because it's literally twice as much. Um, I'm a horrible, horrible person, I know. Um, so thank you for watching this wacky calc Wednesday. It's a beautiful integral, and I'll be doing another uh, Lambert W function thing for the next wacky calc Wednesday. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider subscribing if you haven't, and please check out my other videos. Also, if you really enjoy my channel enough to put in a little bit of effort, please promote this on things like Reddit or your social media if... if you know, you think it's it's worth that amount of time. Really trying to get to 1,000 subscribers before I've been doing this for one year. So let's get me there. I'm at 834, I think. So let's try to do that. So thank you very much for watching, and bye bye Quick little thing. This channel has an Instagram, so it is at what the hectagon, of course, and it has a Twitter, and it is, of course, naturally, of course, naturally, naturally, of course, also at what the hectagon, and my email is the incorrectly spelled what the hectagon, why spell check before you make the email, right, that you can't then change, at gmail.com. Now, all of these are in the description if you don't want to have to somehow watch the video and pause it and actually write it down. That's the, uh, that's the stuff. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye. Uh,